Since the dawn of time, an endless cycle of ebbs and flows of water has sustained life on our small green planet. One such miracle of this cycle is the Okavango River Basin, a cyclical phenomenon fed by seasonal floods in Angola. When the river returns, it is a time of joy for both animals and humans alike. These pulsing hydrological cycles sustain life in even the most harsh landscapes. However, there are increasing pressures on these systems with both internal forces like upstream development as well as pressures outside the system like global climate change. Just as the waters gather, we have also congregated from around the world to share our expertise and lessons learned in the vital management of these complex systems. is attracting a lot of people from all across the world, not only focusing on a range of different systems, but also on a range of different aspects of flood pulsed wetlands. One of the great things about bringing such a range of people together is that it generates a lot of um, energy and thinking about why science matters and how to make science relevant to everyday people. This is the first conference that I know of that actually has flood pulsed in the title and um, it's a recognition of how important the flood cycle is in many wetlands of the world. Uh, we need to fix this platform of dialoguing between uh, what science can deliver and then uh, the absorption capacity that the policymakers may have and then again how policymaking can direct uh, science work in such a way that the products are not just uh, the scientific products are not generated for the sake of science, but for real problem solving. I think it's a very complicated issue. It isn't just a question of the fact that it takes five or ten years for research results to get to, to trickle down to people that are actually doing the management. The main challenge to wetlands uh, lost everywhere is drainage. People are developing them uh, for, for agriculture or taking the water out of them. I just finished a big study in Iraq and there. Uh, 90% of the wetlands have been actually drained and the water is being moved to the north. So the wetlands and all the bird species, of course, have disappeared. And this is a problem worldwide. Um, the Okavango flows through most of all the water from the Okavango comes from Angola. Most of the territory in the basin is in Angola. So now Angola is under pressure to develop that river and, and, and provide for its people. In order to collaborate with somebody closely, you have to be able to trust them. And you can't trust them unless you know them to meet colleagues, uh, perhaps other scientists that you haven't met in person, but have communicated with, or just read their papers, but it's nice to you know, get together in person and, and talk about issues. For my interest, the first thing would be to benefit from the scientific uh, research and expertise that has been undertaken, not necessarily in the Okavango Delta, but elsewhere in the world, which we can tap from. Managing not just uh, the systems as they they are found within our borders, but the, the entire ecosystems for, for, for the future, so that we don't disturb them. Often the perception is that a flood is a, an aberrant situation and that you're free to take the water from the flood because the normal condition is the low water condition. And ecologists know that that's uh, not right, that the flood is very necessary to keep the system functioning. Yeah. <laughs>